So first of all, the most important thing is the history and mental status, and then the LOC, or level of consciousness. Level we'll crew. go through that later. Uh, you'll be introduced to the Glasgow Coma Scale. That will tell you the level of consciousness of the patient. Are you doing this in clinical? You went to you, you went to Harbor, right? Were you instructed how to do Glasgow? Yeah. No. Who said yes? Then you assess the patient's ability to speak and and the use of the language. Then cranial nerve function. How many cranial nerves again? How many pairs? Twelve. Twelve. Each one has its own test. Okay. Some tests might evaluate multiple cranial nerves, but each cranial nerve can be Sorry, that, that picture I showed you uh, and the functions, those could be tested, each one of those. Motor and sensory uh, function, of course. So here, this is the olfactory cranial nerve one, which is, the factory is something to do with smell, right? So the way to do it, um, you ask the patient, Miss yeah, Valerie, to uh, Smell? Either close your eyes or you put a blindfold and uh, you, you put in known smells and ask her to identify it. So, uh, like coffee or lemon or orange. No, that doesn't count <laughs> because that's not universal. So, so, you want her to, uh, you want the patient to identify the uh, correct, identify it correctly. So, number two, optic. To test visual acuity and visual field, has to look directly at the bridge of your nose. So this will be discussed better in, in chapter on, on the sensory part because uh, vision is one of the senses. But generally, if you're trying to test for visual acuity, you ask that person to look at the chart. It's known as this Snellen's chart. Snellen? Snellen. 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 Oh, you you know that eye chart, you know, uh, when you go to the DMV to get your license, they ask you to do that. That's that's the chart. It's a test for visual acuity. And visual field, um, okay, uh, you ask that, it's like a confrontation test. It's known as the confrontation test. So, uh, this will assume that the examiner, like you, you're the nurse, the examiner will have a normal visual field acuity because visual field is not direct vision it's on the per it's uh, testing for your peripheral vision right so or actually direct vision plus per peripheral vision that's your that's your uh, entire visual field so you are not visual acuity will test only for direct vision right you also want to test for the per peripheral vision you add them together that's your visual field now to do that is to do the confrontation, you, what are you asking? What are you asking? Mm -hmm. you, you're going to do a uh, con confrontation test. So you ask the patient to look into my eyes, and you'll be eye to eye with the patient, and then you you move your fingers or an object from the periphery. Now don't just just keep your eyes straight. Don't, don't, don't move your eyes. Okay. Then I will ask her to I will move the uh, my fingers going to the, from the periphery, going to the center. And the moment that she sees it, then she will indicate that she's seeing the finger, See. or fingers. It should be at about the same time that you yourself, did. so you have to be equidistant, yeah. and the object should be more or less, be, uh, exactly the, the distance and the angle should be the same as the both of you. That's why I said it has to be it's to be under the assumption that the one testing has normal visual field for that to work, right? If you yourself have the problem, then you cannot do it properly because you're testing her visual field against your own, right? You, your own is used as the standard. If you have the problem, then you cannot be the standard. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, next is oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens. How do you test this? Movement of the eye. So each the eye, eyeball, has, has six muscles, six muscles going that way, going, pulling that way, pulling that way, and there's also the obliques, right? So that's more than six. But generally, uh, those are those are the muscles that are uh, pulling on the eyeball. Okay. Um, 
each one can be tested. Each one has a different uh, nerve nerve innervation, nervous innervation. So the test to do this is the uh, what do you call yeah. it? It's the finger following test. Finger following test. So, or object following test, or a a marker following test. So you ask the patient to look straight. Okay. And then look at this object or my finger. Then, without moving your head, I want you to follow it only with your eyes. Oh, she crossed, though. No, you, you have to follow. You have to see if she could follow it. Okay, so that will you were looking at you're looking at the movement of the eyeball, and it's controlled by the muscle and ultimately controlled by the nerve. So if there's a problem, she gets cross-eyed, like Robert said. Then there's a problem. <laughs> For example. <laughs> For example, uh, this is like one eye should turn the, 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 the right eyeball and that's the left eyeball. Okay, now your finger goes here. Okay, <laughs> then both of these should, should be looking at that direction, right? Because it should be consensual, it should be the same. But if not necessarily binary, but if the patient is the able to move the right eye looking here, <laughs> but this one's it's there, so there is a problem, right? We're kind that, of just that's part of it. So it that the means the, 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 the muscle that's pulling here is paralyzed, right? It cannot move it to the, to the right side. So there's a problem. So you just identify what muscle is involved, and then you can identify where the problem is, what nerve is involved. So that is the finger following test. Test for this three. <coughs> You follow? That is just pretty, pretty straightforward. Next, we have the uh, trigeminal. Uh, you could test the jaw, jaw strength. And remember, trigeminal is both sensory and motor. And, uh, and motor. So jaw strength is actually, uh, you, are, you ask her to bite on something if, if she could do it. If this, no, it's it's by experience. There's no meter that you could judge the strength of the the bite, right? So the muscle, their muscles. So you can tell so, there's like a problem with how they're biting, right? Well, if you ask her to bite on 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 let, let's say a really soft like like a straw, and she couldn't even do it, right? Or she cannot bite it off, like what? A laffy taffy or a totsirol. Totsirol is, is, is harder, right? So uh, then you can make a judgment, okay? That, and then you could see if it's equal. You know, if there's strong on the right but not on the left, you could see if it's equal. Then the second part is sens sensation of the face, then you could ask her to close her eyes again and then you stroke it with a feather or maybe prick it with a pin and then ask her if she felt that or. No, you just tell her, okay, don't look or cover you. I'll cover you with a blindfold. Don't be and tell me if you feel anything and tell me which side, left or right side of the face. So you cover the entire uh, distribution of the trigeminal nerve. You see the pest and serena, remember that? So, so make it just a very light break, not, not too deep, okay? And so then he will say, she will say, oh, it's on the right forehead, left forehead. Something like, or a touch. So because touch and pain will, will have different receptors or pressure will have a different receptor. So that's how you do it. Facial, it's both, but it's mainly uh, paralysis. So even by just looking at the face, if there's a symmetry, then you know right away that there's a, there's a paralysis on that side. Okay, then you could ask her to uh, purse her lips. Okay, can you purse your lips? Okay, and then you raise your, your your eyebrows upwards. Okay, and then smile. So the smile should be equal. The pull should be equal, right? So if it's only pulling on one side, a symmetrical, an asymmetrical smile. Okay, uh, then uh, that is a symptom of paralysis on one side or they also call it the sardonic grin. The Mona Lisa. So there is, the Mona Lisa smile is, is 
symmetrical, right? The sardonic green is when you know the bad guys in the movies they, they have a lopsided smile or green. So, or the emoji? Uh, but uh, if you uh, you you would know, right? If there's equality in the both sides, then vestibular or acoustic that's the eighth nerve. Yeah. He's just hearing, right? Also yeah. balance and hearing. Uh, okay, same thing. Close, close the eyes, and then uh, a ticking watch, for example, a sound source. Then you move it really closer to the so to the ear, to and then at the time that when she could hear it, could compare it with your own. Again, again, uh, that is the assumption that your hearing is normal. There are other tests to the uh, the uh, you know what a tuning fork is? Yes. Yeah. Something like that, right? Okay, it will be, uh, it will have different frequencies, so use that to tune pianos or musical instruments. We could use that for, for testing the eighth nerve. We will uh, be discussing this more when we go into the uh, eyes and ears, okay? Then uh, nine, glossopharyngeal, so taste. So the same thing, you have a separate test of known tastes, okay? Uh, what? Cinnamon S or uh, sweet, sour, bitter, sweet, sour, or whatever. Uh, so, <laughs> if she's able to identify those, closing your eyes, uh, then you know, taste is very closely related with smell, too. You know, so if you just smell it, then you could probably guess taste. it. But sugar doesn't smell anything, but you should like, be able to I taste it. It's sugar. Mm. Huh? It smells bad, but supposedly it tastes good. You don't know what bad is until you smell the durian. The durian? Ooh, it's delicious. That's bad. Yeah, durian. What did you say about papaya? Know. They smell pretty bad. Apparently, they taste really sweet and good. I, I really, I really don't have a problem with the smell of papaya, but durian, yeah, I don't eat it at all. Why? I don't like the smell. <laughs> yeah, but it tastes if good. If you don't smell good, you don't eat it. The taste is different from the smell. Yeah, but uh, I like, uh, I like my food to to smell good. Anyway, uh, you could check for the gag reflex. How do you do this again? Say, uh, 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 <laughs> there's a couple different, different ways to check the gag reflex. Every time you are trying to put the patient back from NPO to, especially from surgery, you check the gag reflex, right? There are so many questions you've seen already. How? Close the door and fart. <laughs> oh my God. Take the thing, tongue yes, you stimulate the throat and then see if there's a gag. Then that's, that's it. Now, second one here. <laughs> Movement of the uvula, how do you check that? It's you the know, ball of the back of the throat. Do you even know what the uvula is? Yes, yeah, the ball stick at the back of the throat. The thing that dangles? Yeah. Okay. It's the balls of the back of the throat. Okay, yeah, that's it. But how do you check for its movement? <laughs> How? Oh, 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 oh. And it's only on the weekend. Yes, you ask the oh. patient to say ah, and then it goes up. You can try oh, it on the window, uh, on, the, on the mirror. So, usually the tongue depressor, okay? You you press on the tongue, and then you ask the patient, say ah, ah. When they say ah, then the uvula moves up. So, if, if it's equal, then that's, that's a positive, that's normal. Then next, number 10. Yeah, poke them in the eye. <laughs> oh, this is the corneal reflex, which is part of the trigeminal. Remember, yeah. trigeminal is also a sensory. So it's a piece of cotton, and then you uh, try to, uh, what do you call this? Make, make a pointed part of the cotton, and then you try to stroke the cornea. Huh? With the thing? No, it's just a piece of clean cotton, OK? You try to stroke the cornea. Just a cotton, it will not cause an injury. Yeah, well, yeah. With your eye. But that's the that's the corneal reflex, and the normal response is what? What do you think will will be the normal response? Will blink. Will blink. Which eye? Both eyes or just the right eye? Right eye. Oh. It'll be like a. It'll be like a flinch. It yeah. should be both eyes oh. because it's a consensual reflex. So, no. See that? So you you. It is a test for both the fifth cranial and, and the levator, uh, I think it's oculomotor third nerve, which is responsible for the blinking motion, okay? And next, okay, so this is what 
what you do, you stroke the, the cornea like that. Then spinal accessory, you just ask, oh, my patient left without telling me. Do you have any question? Against medical advice? So you just ask them to shrug the shoulders. It should be equal, right? All the time. Uh, can you shrug your shoulders? A little okay. All right. So that's equal. That's normal hypoglossal tongue motion. So you ask just a bit. You see that tongue motion. Okay, there are people that can, you know, can, can make the tongue like that. They can roll it? Like, like, yeah, like that. I know how to roll my tongues. Ours and That ours. is my genetic. Swedish. You know, I could never do that, but my, but my sister could. What? You, know? you come from a like long line of tongue rollers. Yeah, roll your sure, sure it in. Sure it in. Right. Oh, oh, I don't want to get... Oh. you do this one? Explicit warning. Yeah, uh, he could do it too. Yeah. That's a good cutting motion. Huh? Yeah, he could do it too, and I you do could do it, room. but that's genetic. I, I couldn't... I do that, I do that. I could so never do it. No, no, it's just okay. <laughs> so, make, you tell them to stick out your tongue, move it upwards, downwards, any movement. If it's, now, side there's side no paralysis there. The 12th cranial nerve is normal. Okay, so those are the cranial nerves. Looks like a fish. <laughs> Motor, uh, test muscle strength. Um, you could just. Well, I'm not to do that one, especially with the hands. You can, they can do it with two fingers, or they can do it with all four, right? And then they can push over this way. And push you, up. As you no, uh, like this, right? And they apply <laughs> resistance, and then you can pull it towards you. It's apply resistance, and they okay. can also pinch. One, one other thing is, uh, okay, I will, I will put resistance. You try, to, you try to raise your 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 arms and I'll give resistance. Yeah. Same thing with the legs. You press on the legs and then you give resistance and see how, how strong the, the movement is. And also, um, uh, okay, I ask you to uh, uh, squeeze my hand as, as strong as you can. Strong. Both, both of them, so you want to see if there's equal, equal strength, okay? Then, Muscle tone, you could just uh, uh, feel through the muscles. Now, normal posturing. Patients with, it depends on the severity of the brain injury. Yeah, check them out. It could be decorticate, and it's more of flexion, like that. I thought you were doing a dance move right there. Patients with strokes, severe strokes, that's decorticate. Corticate. And then, it gets the the then if they become spastic or extension like that, that's the de decerebrate. Lots of ease. Okay. And then they just So this one is more severe Ooh. than this one. Then Why? it could it huh? Could, could because it, it's higher. It, it's, it's just the entire cerebrum is affected. This one is just the cortex. The cortex. Well, usually they will end up with being, uh, with being, uh, having contractures because it's permanently, permanently uh, flexed. It's permanently extended the Stand. wrist and Stand. you got the ankle still. Okay, so it's mainly straight. This one is decorticate. This one is decerebral. Now this is flexion, meaning they don't have any tone at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a different type of, of posture into. Then two components of the uh, level of consciousness, we have arousal and awareness. So awareness is for components. Really? Now arousal is ability of the patient to respond to pain, voice, or uh, uh, to open eyes, right? So, so if they're, they seem to be in coma, then you give them so, some voice command. Uh, Mr. Mr. X, uh, uh, can, can you can you wake up, Mr. X? If they respond, then that's a positive response as far as arousal is concerned. Pain. Um, to see if they're faking it. Just you you can yes that you can do you can rub the sternum, like sternal rub. That's really very painful. Check their skin tissue. And if they have some movement, then at least uh, maybe they call it stupor or leth lethargy. So if the patient is able to respond at least to pain. Awareness, on the other hand, has four components. Orientation, the person, place, and time. So you ask them, do you, uh, do you know your name? Uh, you know where you are? Okay, you ask questions like that. And, and uh, place, where you are, person, like the wife is there. Uh, do you recognize this person? Uh, 
then if she, if he can, if the patient can or cannot, then that's a problem of orientation. Then memory check for short term. So there are some tests for that. Uh, that can, you can check for, for short term memory because usually if there's memory loss, the first to go are the short term memory. It's like Dory, right? Yeah. Dory? Yeah. Funny, yeah. And, What's that? What's that, Megan? No, no, I'm reading the Pledge of Knowledge. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, calculations. You can ask them some simple calculations, not very uh, standard calculations like a calculation for square root. No, just just simple addition, subtraction. And then uh, there's a, a there's a booklet or a, a set of questions that you could ask. Like ordinary knowledge, or an ordinary person should be able to tell you, right? Like, uh, who's the president of the United States? I don't believe Obama. it myself. Oh, yes. <laughs> or, Your president is mine. Who's the chief justice of the Supreme Court of the United States? Yeah. Uh, Obama. Isn't it, uh, yeah, that's, that's the okay. So, questions like, what's the capital of Zimbabwe? Sure, I don't know. Hmm. That's a Jeffrey. Oh, I know. <laughs> Okay, so, no? so it's a fun of knowledge. Right. Fun, not, not, not fun. What? Okay. <laughs> now, I'm changes, uh, there see. could be restlessness, disorientation, and lethargy. We'll talk about, I told you, I promise you, we'll talk about Glasgow Coma Scale. Yeah. Remember, there are three, three major groups, eye response, ver uh, motor response, and verbal response. At each one uh, section, we'll have different scoring. So. Uh, eye response will be, have a scale of 1 to 4, motor response will have a scale of 1 to 6, and verbal response is a scale of 1 to 5, and these are the parameters, okay? You give a, uh, just look at the patient, if he's able to open the eyes spontaneously, then that's a 4. Then motor response, if you response to a verbal command, okay, uh, can you uh, say, uh, Mr. X, can you blink your eye? If he's able to do that, then that's a 6. Then, then verbal response is, is oriented and conversing. That's obviously the most normal. Is a five. So what's the highest score? You can you can get for the Glasgow Coma Scale. Fifteen. So four plus six plus five is fifteen. What's the lowest score? Is it a zero? Like an upper score zero? Three. It's three because the minimum is one for each <coughs> group of parameters. Okay. Sometimes it's good if you memorize this because they'll just give. You the description, question. and then you ask for the score. It's like the APGAR score. The APGAR score, we're going to talk about it for the baby uh, after birth. Okay. So here, <laughs> so best response is 15. If the patient is 3, that's the lowest score, is totally unresponsive. Now, coma starts at 8, <coughs> eight or less. So if it's a 9 or 10, it's, you still cannot call it coma. Understand. So that. if it's eight or less, then uh, you could say that uh, the patient is coma. The lower it is, the more severe the condition is. The prognosis is also poorer if it's the GCS is low. Any questions? So uh, this is this is a very important tool in checking for level of consciousness. I think there's a similar one for pediatrics, and it is um, modified for for pediatric patients. <coughs> Now, sensory perception status, uh, assessment of touch, so gen gentle uh, stroking with a cotton wisp over the, over the four extremities. Then the assessment of pain and of a pin, so prick with a pin. Then sensation temperature, so you could apply warm or cold water. Make sure it's just warm, it's not hot. You don't want to cause burns in the patient. Then assessment of position sense. Example is the Romberg test. Romberg test. So you ask the patient to stand with feet together. I wish my patient was here, and then and then close close the eyes. See if uh, uh, the patient is able to maintain that position without without uh, being shaky or or, in, or even falling down. Then lab lab uh, laboratory uh, tests that you could do blood and urine cultures, drug screens. So for all you know the. Uh, the uh, mm. neurologic symptoms are caused by an overdose of drugs or maybe even alcohol, ABG. Did mm -hmm. we discuss ABG before? Okay, no, same thing. Uh, oh, no, yeah, I told you about the... Uh, Alkalosis. Alkalosis. Uh, was that a tic-tac-toe method, right? Mm -hmm. And there was a video of that. 
our patient is back. Then you have the <laughs> CSF. How do you obtain the CSF? By going into the arachnoid, arachnoid spinal arachnoid, process. Subarachnoid space. What procedure? Lumbar. Lumbar. Lumbar tap or spinal tap, okay? So you don't have And CT, we've been through this before, right? CT scan, it's, does this have radiation or no? No. It I has, it's basically a, an x-ray, but you are able to cut or slice the uh, but the images. So, so it, this one has radiation, this one is magnetic resonance imaging. There's no radiation involved here. It's magnets. Brain scan is also radiation, PET scan, Positron emission tomography will also involve radiation. Lumbar puncture is the one, the test that will um, uh, allow, allow, allow the doctor to obtain cerebrospinal fluid. Here. So, you see, this is the cauda equina, right? Equina, horse's tail. And you know your, your spinal cord is really up to here, about L1. So, the safest way to, to Put in your needle to the subarachnoid space. See subarachnoid space to get the will be uh, at the, the third up below the third lumbar vertebra. So the space between the third and fourth lumbar Count. vertebra. So it's the way down. Like yes. No. The, between the third and fourth. That's the that's the best way to to do your lumbar tap. And when you're doing it, you put it slowly oh, inside until you feel a give. There's a give, and then the fluid will come out. Be careful that you don't drain too much, too much CSF. That will cause a headache. It's just like a CSF leak. All right. So then uh, I'll tell you what to do. So after the the procedure, you ask the patient to remain flat, flat, supine, no pillows or anything for the two hours to prevent CSF leakage. Would cause could cause severe headache, spinal headache. So they also access that part if they're doing, have you heard of spinal anesthesia? Okay, the same thing, it's the same thing. They inject it the same place and then they just, instead of taking out this uh, CSF, actually they, they aspirate some of the CSF that mix it with the, mix it with the anesthetic and then they inject it back and then it will uh, anesthetize from the waist down. Okay, so if you're doing some C-section. C-section, yeah, the best, best, uh, uh, best anesthesia for C-section is um, is uh, is spinal anesthesia because if you do general anesthesia, it might uh, if the, the surgeon or obstetrician is not too quick in taking out the baby, it might cause respiratory depression of the baby. So spinal would probably work better in in a C-section. Okay. Um, if there's headache, then bed rest and then give analgesic and ice to the head. EEG, okay, it's known as EEG, electroencephalogram. That is why there's also an ECG, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why most doctors would say, in giving verbal orders, they would rather say EKG rather than ECG so as not to confuse so that the nurse might be confused and might do an EEG. ECG is for the heart, EEG for the brain, brain waves. So they, they put electrodes on the head. Uh, sometimes they ask the patient to have a shampoo if it's a scheduled elective EEG. And then they'll put on, uh, on the electrodes on the head and then they'll run the machine and there will be tracing uh, based on your electrical activity. Now if there's a seizure, the electrical activity would really be different than when there's no seizure. Not necessarily, not necessarily. You can, um, you can just put the electrodes uh, over the hair. But uh, that's why they ask you to, uh, to uh, shampoo because there might be some stuff there that might, might interfere with electrical uh, conduction. Okay. Uh, CT, uh, angiogram, what's an angiogram? Angio means blood vessel, right? Or, and gram is when you inject a dye into the blood vessel and then you follow its progress. That's an angiogram. If it's an artery, it's known as an arteriogram or the, the procedure is arteriography. Okay? Brain scan is similar to CT scan. 
electromyogram is like an EEG, but this one is an EMG. So they're trying to get the electrical responses of the muscles. It's muscles. When you say myogram, it means muscles. And echoencephalogram is an ultrasound of the head. Very commonly used in babies in the nursery. See if there's any bleeding inside, intracranial bleeding. The preferred preferred um, modality is an ultrasound of the head or also known as echo encephalogram. Okay. Uh, this is uh, oh, this is the tense, I think. You know, to relieve the pain. Um, electric, I'm uh, using electric, uh, electric current, very low electric current to uh, relieve pain. It actually works. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the EMG measures the, uh, we already mentioned this. Oh, this is the EMG. Uh, you, there's a needle, okay, to prick the, uh, up to the muscle. And then you run a little current through it, not enough to electrocute the, the patient, of course. And you could see the, uh, then it would be translated to graph. That's why right, electro uh, my, myograph. So helpful in patients with myasthenia gravis, one of the major conditions that we'll be discussing in this chapter. Have you heard of this condition, myasthenia gravis? I just heard it the other day. Huh? I just heard it the other day. In your patient? You have a patient with myasthenia? He's older. Did you study about it? I'm meaning to, but I didn't know it was going to come up. Because case. I was going to ask you what you know about it, what the defect is. Basically, the defect here is a problem with the acetylcholine. You remember, acetylcholine is the, uh, neuro, is the neurotransmitter, right? So there could be a problem with transmission if your neurotransmitter is deficient. So nursing intervention, you inform the patient that there will be pain, a little pain or discomfort when you insert the needle. And uh, you could give mild analgesic or warm, warm compress. And of course you monitor the site for bleeding. <coughs> I already sent the uh, uh, can anybody can confirm if you receive it in your email? Andres? Yeah, we got it. In oh, you, email. you got it? Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a, see, uh, the, the hair is not shaved. Um, so it's electrical activity of brain cells. If it was the heart, it was an e, it's an ECG. If it's the muscles, an EMG. Okay, so hair and scalp clean, wash hair after the procedure because the uh, can be gooey, the, the, the stuff in, on the electrode, they put in like a, a gel or, or a, a uh, paste-like thing and substance, so you have to clean the hair. Cerebral angiography, I told you about angiography, but this time it's specific for the cerebral circul circulation, the arteries, the blood vessels that supply the brain. Okay, so you do this if you want to, um, for Check example, patient has a stroke, meaning there's a blockage of the artery, you want to diagnose, you want to know where that blockage or obstruction of the artery is, which, which part of the uh, cerebral circulation, so you can do a cerebral uh, angiography. Okay, so pre-procedure, a meat meal prior to the test, so patient is on NPO. And since it will be using a dye, it's universal, right? Note for iodine, allergy, iodine shellfish. for shellfish, shellfish, and everything. And you instruct the patient to expect a metallic taste. That's the dye. You see, it doesn't just go to the, to the artery. It goes all over your body. Also, with, with CD, scan with, CD scan with contrast, there's also a sudden heat that goes through all your body uh, when, so that they will tell you, okay, we're now giving the dye, you expect some heat, and it's really very hot. But it just, it's just a, a fleeting moment. It, it doesn't stay there for long, but I, I think it, it, it feels good, you know, feeling warm. It's a warm feeling. And then post-procedure, uh, bed rest for up to six hours, do not flex the lower extremities. 
if closing device is used. So usually the access point will be in the femoral artery and then they thread it up all the way, the catheter all the way to the cerebral, uh, cerebral circulation. Then monitor vital signs, neuro check. So if there's a catheter in there uh, or a device that will hold it in place, you cannot just bend it, okay? So keep it straight um, for six hours. Then you monitor the urine output. See, a vital signs and neuro checks is every 15 for two hours. So four times an hour, times two hours, that's eight times that you need, need to check the vital signs and also the neurologic, uh, neurologic examination. So sensory, level of consciousness, awareness, all of those stuff that we talked about earlier. How did they get it up to the brain? Huh? How did they get the catheter up there? Um, you know, the circulation, you have, you have to know your circulation. Yeah, it has to go, it, have, it has to go through the aorta and then, uh, yes, it goes to the heart and then it, they will thread it through the carotids. The aorta and then, yeah. Yeah, into the carotids, and then they'll inject the dye. Maybe you can inject it through the carotids, uh, I mean the dye when you reach the carotids, because you know it's going up to the brain, right? So inject the dye and then, hi son. you requested to ask questions to uh, a member of class number five. We just passed the MC exit and, and the MPLEX. Um, she has, uh, uh, were you hired already? She has just been hired by Sunnyside, so when you go there, you might be seeing her. Her name is Sam Bautista, and does I think Megan Come on in. Come on in, Sam. Sam, okay. Sam. 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 So uh, you can say something, and um, if you have any questions, <laughs> she passed the uh, essay exit both times, oh, one sure. and two, and then uh, first time with the NCLEX. Uh, how soon after did you? Less than a month, right? One week. One week after the second yeah. essay. Oh, the essay. Yeah. Uh, oh, one months. week after you got you got your letter of eligibility. Yeah. yeah. So you have to wait for that. That's the thing. So once you pass the exam, uh, once you're considered a graduate, then the DON will send all your papers up to the uh, up to the uh, to the uh, board, and then they'll look at your records if you have completed all the requirements, including the clinical hours. That's why they're very strict with the clinical hours. Um, they will send you that letter of eligibility. Once you get that, then you can. You can register with Person View, and you pay two hundred dollars, right? Okay. And there's one hundred fifty for for no one hundred fifty is for the board. Yes, and two hundred for two hundred for the Person View. This is three hundred fifty. One hundred fifty, I think uh, the school will pay, yeah. and the two hundred dollars you pay, but you get reimbursed yes. when you pass, or even if you don't pass. Yeah. No, be, even That's before you take yeah. exam, you, you get reimbursed. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then uh, go, once you pay, then you can the you wait maybe uh, just one day or two days. Person view will send you the ATT. Five minutes. Five minutes, you get the ATT through email. Mm -hmm. Okay, you get the ATT uh, authority to test. Once you have that, then you can call them right back and schedule the exam. You you choose the. Uh, the test center, you choose the date and you choose the time. Now three three of them in the same class, for some reason, it just by coincidence, went to the same center at the same time, eight o'clock, right, on a Monday morning, and all three passed. Um, you get a minimum of 85, 85, 75? No, minimum, minimum. Minimum. The, Yes, it's 85. 85. 85. Okay, 85. And it, it could go all the way to 205 questions or five hours, which, which, whichever comes first. Now, if you don't get to 205, but you've already exceeded, you've already maxed out the time at five hours, it will stop. 
and it will look only the last 60 look at the last 60 questions that will only be evaluated by the computer or it could stop at 85 so that means that the computer has decided whether you pass or you fail. So if it stops at 85 and you fail, then you must have messed it up really badly. Because it, it's that short time, number of questions that it, it's already decided, oh, she's not going to pass or he's not going to pass, right? So that's, that's how it is. And any questions? How many questions did you get? 205. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I have like 20 minutes left. I took my time. Because you have you have like more chances of passing if you did two hundred and five. Yeah. Okay, uh the other the other one also had two hundred and five. Mm -hmm. She also passed. Now the first one who took the earlier than the three of them had eighty five, she passed. And the third one with with them uh had eighty five and passed. But she was the best bet, right? Mm -hmm. In your class? She always uh, has and yeah, I after that, I don't know uh, who else. Terry. Uh, Terry. Like. There was another one with one two hundred five questions. So two hundred five doesn't really mean that you fail. For me, it simply means that the computer has not decided until you re arrive at the max number of questions whether you fail or pass. Right. So it means that it's still evaluating. It means you still have a chance. It means. Uh, you have a high chance of passing because it's still not decided, right? But the, uh, the other thing that you can get from the experience is that you need to be ready for a 205 question test. If you're just, if you're just uh, doing 55 questions all the time, maybe even 100 questions, you might get tired after that. You know? So you have to train for a marathon, not just for a sprint. If it's up at 85, then fine, well and good. Right? Uh, any other questions? Who stops at 30? Uh, how many chronological questions? Oh. Uh, they have, have a lot of, so like all they have procedures that, what you call that? Um, oh, delegations, and they have. Good, okay. um, what percentage are the uh, select all the Oh my god. Like a lot, yeah, I guess. Everyone? So there's a lot, <laughs> a lot. Not half, right? Not half. Not half, but there's a lot. And there's in order. You have to put the procedure in order, and yeah, delegations. You have to know your your role as an LBN, and what else? That's it. I didn't get any um pictures. I didn't picture get no sound. Picture no sound, man. No sound. I didn't get any. Uh, well, that doesn't mean we don't have them. Uh, you don't have to bring your your own headset. They, they will provide it, it yeah. to you. Yeah. And you cannot, you only allow paper which they provide. And whiteboard. And a, whiteboard. a whiteboard. It's not a whiteboard. And oh, okay. so read the answers they don't allow you to dump data, you know. Sometimes when you get the exam, you memorize things, and then when you get there, you put in all, all of the things there. They don't allow that, right? They don't allow that. I don't know what. What, what they call that? Uh, then there's a camera mon monitoring you, you all it's like the time. It's like a prison in there. Huh? It's like a prison. I was wearing a leather jacket. They asked me to take it off, yeah. put it in the locker, or <laughs> hang it outside. Yeah. Where even was the, even uh, your wallet. Where was yeah. the testing facility? I went to Glendale. Dance Valley. They're all kind of far away. Mm -hmm. Glendale's a nice area. No, they're though. Are, they're close to here, right? For me, that's closer. Is that closest to you? She lives in Long Beach, Strong Beach. <laughs> Lindell was close. How different was the Hesse exit to the Anchorage? Good question. Which is, which is, okay. Well, Hesse is easy, easy, easy. Really? So the Hesse is more confusing. Mm -hmm. It's more, it, it, it will really test your critical thinking. Mm -hmm. If you really know the things, like the, um, Administration of insulin and NPH. Yeah. I got that. I'm not supposed to say it, but <laughs> mm -hmm. the procedure and uh, yeah, it's only they will test you. Yeah. Um, question: You think the HESI exit exam was a good practice for the NCLEX or was it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But it was easier than the NCLEX. 
-hmm. So the sh oh, I'm saying that. I've heard other students say that the, the <coughs> NCLEX uh, the NCLEX was easier mm -hmm. too. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, I'm not saying you're wrong, but uh, or maybe because I didn't have breakfast that day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told all of them that maybe a few days or maybe the day before you scout the area, you go there, make arrangements for everything. Yeah. Don't be stressed by anything on that day. <laughs> then that morning, she had she had to look for a babysitter or or somebody to drive her son. So. So you forgot Eat breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. And sleep. Did you sleep? Yes. Before before the test? Mm -hmm. You had no anxiety issues? No. <laughs> so it's just gonna be that. Yes. Be like a horse with this. Just relax a day before and then everything you have, every tool you have is with Dr. Jude. He'll give you everything. It's just up to you guys. I start, I start read as much as you can, study as much. If you don't like reading, watch videos. What video would you recommend? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, I watched that. Did you get bathroom breaks when you're taking the test? Hmm? Did you get bathroom breaks when you're taking the test? Yeah. It's like they give you a bed thing? First, first hundred, I think, the, the, the computer will stop and it'll ask you if you want a bathroom break for 10 minutes. Yeah, and another one after like hundred questions maybe. Can you smoke in the center? Smoking oh, break? Like building? No. no if you only have ten minutes break. Yeah, so that's like one 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 cigarette. So yeah. Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I quit smoking and then I started the school and I just started to Yeah, sometimes it comes it comes from nerves, right? Cigarettes, yeah. yeah. So I was like ten cigarettes. Somehow like what? So you get that letter that tells you you can take the test through the email or through the email. Email. email? After you pay for 200, five minutes, you get the email okay. to do the test. How long did your results after taking the NCLEX oh, yeah. Yeah. take one to come week. in? One week. That's a long yeah. week. I week. lost weight for one week. Because I thought, I thought I failed. Because of the 205, because that's the idea. That if it's 200, you probably failed. I thought I failed. Okay. I can't eat. I, I slept all day. And then I got, I got, I got the letter. And kept bugging me. What were you doing yeah. right before you got the letter? Do you remember what you were doing before you found out? Sleep. You were I sleeping? Just, yeah. I can't eat. I'm depressed. I was depressed. I thought I failed. Well, what'd you do? Like, what were you doing when, like, did your parents hand you the letter? Did you go to the mailbox? Or? I went to the mailbox. You went to the mailbox? Okay. Mm -hmm. And, like, when you opened it, like, what is, like, well, what color was the letter? Because we need to know this. What's the color? It's what was like, it on the front? They say if you fail. It's a thick packet. It's a thick packet, and it'll take a long time, or if there's, like, a pink thing that you'll have to pick it up. Post, post, post. Oh, the one with the map. Yeah, yeah. It's registered mail or yeah. certified mail. I'm not sure. What color was the outside envelope on your letter? White. White? Well, and was it thick? Was it regular? It's like B it's, it came from BBNPT. That's oh. all. If it's a and thick it's packet, it includes the the form for registration. Re registration. So and you have to you pay, pay another 200 what? if you fail. Yeah. Was it one sheet? The pass, pass yeah. letter, yeah. The yeah, pass right. is one sheet, two sheets. kind of thing because there's a lot of... And it just gives you like pass, like pass or fail, yeah. right? So it doesn't like give you a score. It doesn't give you a score. No score. And they don't, give, they don't give cards anymore. If you pass, it's all online. Huh? they don't give cards anymore. So there's like no, it's there's like no physical certificate. license? Oh, yes. No, you have a certificate and then... There's no card. They will, uh, if you apply, they will check your license number online. Online, oh. yeah. Like they you do with the farm section. Save the trees. No. I hate the trees. You can make your own. Yeah, we'll <laughs> just save trees now because all the trees. What did you study, like, besides, like, the Spider-Man? Did you use, like, Saunders, Kaplan, or whatever? This book? No. The red one? The, the, red, one. One. the red one or the, the oh, new, the sixth yeah. edition is more orange mm -hmm. than the red Did you read the chapters or just... Just the questions. Because I read them for my HESI. So I just, for my NCLEX, I watch videos, I read a little bit. 
everything he gave me, I started using. She wanted to, uh, she wanted to enroll to Kaplan, right? Yes, but, but they don't have in person, and I found another um, review center, but it's, it's, it's like for next month, and my test date is a month before mm -hmm. that, so I just study on my own. I have one last question. So from the day, from your HESI, from your HESI exit exam, the second one, how many days was that till you're actually able to test? And my NCLEX? Yeah, from your NCLEX exit to the actual, I apologize, HESI, from the HESI, HESI exit to the NCLEX test. Three weeks. I studied for three weeks. No, I mean, that was, it was three weeks yeah. total. So you took the exit, the HESI exit, three weeks passed, and then you were able to take the Yeah, NCLEX. but uh, I think that one week of that is... Was processing. Was passing uh, Miss Kim sent the paperwork to BVNT. Thankfully, this time they they processed very quickly. One week after, right? And she got the letter of eligibility. Then she waited another two weeks uh, before she actually took the exam. Mm -hmm. cool. the next have day. Closer appointments to take the test. <laughs> you can do the They have Anaheim. You could test right away, right? Yeah, the next if day. you wanted the next to. Day? Yes, yeah. That's what I want. Sure. I ain't got no time. Waste. Start making that money. Oh, yeah. In, in your, in your calendar, you can go back to your calendar. It says here there's a live scan scheduled. Oh, yeah. You can notice it. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So you got to bring your government ID. Yeah, you need to have your uh, government ID with picture. Picture ID. Okay. So, like your driver's license, that would do. Did you purchase any other books? Or just, it was just the red one, right? The red one. The Sanders help me here. Because it's like, it's like everything's in there. Mm -hmm. But it's up to you if you want to, like, read anything else. There's another book, the uh, Hesse. Was that that you showed me? Uh, is it? Oh, the the, the blue. Oh, I studied the exam cram too. Exam cram. Yeah, I studied the exam cram. Exam. I have a copy of that. I could give it. Uh, it's 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 a PDF. It's just too many to print. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then um, we have the mnemonics from the PN mastery mastery and Clex mastery PN. There are nine. Oh, I already gave it to you, right? The mnemonics. And what else? The sun gun. I still collect those. So I take a test. So you know, these this terms is going to go very quickly. Right, Sam? Yes. So that's why I tried to start preparing you from term, term three. That's why I started giving them the workbooks. Okay, from Lippincott. You could go over them again, you could do the quizzes again. Yeah, th those workbooks have, each one has, has uh, associated uh, quiz with the answer key, right? So you go over those again. There are only 20 for every, for every topic. Mm -hmm. you the and by the time Hesse you get exit. to the HESI exits, especially if you don't make it the first time, the second time could be very, very nerve-wracking. Yes, again. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Eat breakfast. <laughs> and Eat chocolate. Any recommend uh, chocolate? Oh yeah. Like steak and eggs. We got to go vegan. We got tofu. <laughs> okay, don't overthink it, Robert. <laughs> what are we gonna eat? I need some brain food. It's easy. It's it's logic. It's common sense. It's like, what would you do if the patient have they were uh, having a hard time breathing? Of course, head of the bed. Yeah, elevate head of the bed. It's like some those kind of questions. It's easy. Easier it's like foundation. Stare into the sunset. You found that has cool. to be more foundations in our simple like term one things or yes. mm -hmm. okay. foundations. Yeah, I I gave them the the topics from the previous one. But it's different the topic, topic. Yeah, I know, but it's a different test. But you just know what they concentrate on. Over half of those questions were fundamentals. You know, that's what that's the information that we want you to master because that's the fundamentals of nursing, and you want to be a nurse, right? So, mm -hmm. it's like there's interventions if the patient had um, 
um, breast removal surgery? What oh, did yeah. you do? Arm. Something like that. Yeah. Defected side thingy. Lip nose it's removed. Nice. If you made it to turn four, you can pass the head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what she means now. <laughs> You're, you just have anxiety. I know. I'm working on it. <laughs> Don't get your um, anxiety get to you. Yeah. And pray. Yeah, we did a lot of praying. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very quiet. Mm -hmm. Characteristically. And Brenda. You're very quiet. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's texting up a storm over there. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to see you. I'm going to be with Mr. Rivera at Anaheim, but the next four weeks I'll be with Ms. Corley's assistant. So I'll see. I'll yeah. start next week. That's cool. So that's for orientation. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. She, are you there? A couple of months ago, she was she was a student just like you. She was in term four, two months ago, Ooh. right? September. Did you apply before you? Question. And now she's, she, she's got an LVN after her name. Now this could be a little bit personal. For Sunnyside, how much <laughs> were they offering as payment? I don't know. I didn't ask. You didn't ask? How about the sign-on bonus? I think it's like three grand. Are you still, are they still three doing sign, sign, signing bonus now? Get that three the last grand time and then we quit. You have to be there for it. You have to be there for it. They're not going to dispute it all at one time. You have to be there for six months a year. They'll give you like a thousand, and you got to stay there another six months to another year. Yeah, because you sign on. I want money right as I sign on. No, you no. You got to work as I'm signing. That is, yeah, you know, they, they're smart too. You know, Robert, they don't want you to just take your money and run. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I told her that uh, when when you get a job offer, take it. Insist on Money. a written offer. Yeah. It has to be written. Everything should be written down, like the uh, the the salary or the wages, and including the uh, including the benefits. It has to be in writing. Don't accept anything that's not in writing. Right. Uh, that is correct, and that's a professional way of doing things, right? Mm -hmm. off there. Um, and this month, I want these days oh, off. I want two free patient care. Is that what you want to see? <laughs> yes. I want two ask and don't tell us. She, want, she uh, wants to go to further, further uh, education. Army? In Me fact, too. one of her classmates is now back in the Philippines to continue her BSM. She left it. And then she's now going to pursue her BSN. I, I know most of you want that too, right? BSN or maybe all the way to advanced nursing practice. Nurse anesthetist. ABP. Because they needed um, like two year, one year working experience if you have yeah. yeah, working experience if you want to go to RN. Yeah. 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 Wait, we can grandfather in the RN? <laughs> you can. You've been working for like 15 years, right? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, I, during, during the uh, term four part of the leadership professionalism it says there that it's best that if you stay with your first employer for at least at least one year right yeah. it has to be one year because that will be on your record yeah. and, and, and future employers will, will see that as loyalty or as you know that you know, if you keep on jumping from one one place to another and you cannot explain that, that's a red flag. Okay, a red flag that you might this guy might have some problems. You know. So if you stayed one, two years, then that would be very good for the rest of me. That's true. Any other questions or is it just me? Now, what happened to your old test books? Are those for free? <laughs> or any type of old? She sold them. Oh, she sold them already? Oh, I'm sure. No, the, the, the Sanders book? You, you want to sell it? Or for free? Pay it forward? I passed here. <laughs> Passing book? Some of her stuff are still there in my 
my father got them. Oh, that was her. There were some people. Those are overproduced. There were names in there that they never asked me about it. And the book is not there, though. No? <laughs> You're not selling your book? Which one? Cassandra's PM. I don't know. Five dollars? Um, Five dollars. Dr. Jude will let you know. Oh, she, uh, that's worse than shirts outside. <laughs> if it's Robert, 15. But a lot, a lot of you already have it, right? Uh, at the yeah. uh, no, some of us work for a living. It will help. It will help. I don't have the book, I don't want Yeah, but I would recommend that you read chapters 14 to 19. That's the fundamentals part. And that will really help. And the Spider-Man videos might be bored by it, but you get a lot from it, right? Mm -hmm. You sent us the links, right? Huh? You sent us the links. Just go on. No, no, no. Oh, link. Just go to YouTube. Every time I do that, it just shows me the Spider-Man. On that side, they have. No, no. The Summit Edward. College. <laughs> Summit Summit College. It's not. Yeah. And just look for the lady. Uh, Summit College. Um, Spider-Man. Okay. Google it. Oh, yeah. They have NCLEX review. Cool. Yeah. Summit. Mm -hmm. Did you use that? All you have to do is put NCLEX review and scroll just a little bit. Spider Man has two ends. Then it would lead you to uh, this site, and they have a lot of videos in there. It's like 15. Probably right? the, same, the same woman with that, with that accent. Well, yeah. not on my phone, but you do an Android, you probably do that over, uh, And I already gave you the uh, the paper, the packet, right? So you can follow the discussion this and that. I know Bertha's following the, uh, the Saunders very well, right? Oh, yeah. On my brief clinical review. Yeah. That's nice. And this is helping you get through this last yeah. Bertha? Bertha? Yeah, I think uh, it would be also helpful if you work as a team or study as a team. Not the entire class, obviously, because mm -mm. that would be too disruptive. But you know, it uh, might help. You might reinforce each other. On Fridays. Mama has so many issues. I ain't got time with them. I prefer solo <laughs> Do it on my own solo study. Yeah, you don't. You, you know, don't do that. Well, that, that, if that works for you, then yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Whatever works. Sorry for the problem with you. Yeah. I, I don't that. If if you look at the results, see, and then this is this is your technique, and your results are showing it. And why why change a winning game? Right? Exactly. So just do it. Uh, what what got you there in the first place? And. Just do more topics. Mm. Okay, you expand your your topics because you know it's not always be on that topic. What helped me was not I picked the top three topics that I liked, subjects so like the endocrine system, this and that. The three ones I were good at, right? I set those to the side, and I focused on the other ones that I was weak on, and that helped me get yeah. that. Yeah. <sighs> well, away. well, yeah. It's always better to start with the familiar things first, or things that you like, and then. But you need to cover no, as, as, as many topics as you can. Yeah. Though. Well, we Even those you don't like, you have to go through them. Right? You have to confront the dark side too, you know. I confront the dark side first. If I'm good at this, I yeah, put that to the it side. It depends on, on what your technique, right? I like you have the to dark go side first. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's what I do too. You know? I mean, that's why I started Saunders at the beginning of the return. Like either for class or for the HESI or the INFLEX, would you find it the most challenging? Everything seems interesting for me. I like it more. What's the point of this? He's like, I'm a doctor. Oh, I love clinical. This is the thing that's working for me. And then they, their class didn't even go to Harvard, no? Sorry about that. Uh, are you going back in term four? Probably. Harvard? No, they don't know. Mr. Valley don't know. Term four is like <laughs> all your presentations. Yeah, teach, OB, mental health. She's the same as what we should have to do. Oh, thank you. They don't have the slides secured yet. We're doing 
med service person. That's why I'm doing New York. So that's well, the space you're going to have one. Is that first, first day in turn four? Yeah. Where did you get this? She to transport away. I saw my ID. They had to go to that crazy place, had to drive, you know, and to, to a part uh, that there's no cell phone signal. Was that the yeah. video? Oh, no, it's different. That's different. I didn't go there. You didn't go there? I, mean, yeah, I ain't trying to go there either. That's like a wrong but turn. Didn't you go there? Yeah. Uh -huh. That doesn't sound like a place where there should be. Oh, yeah, you did, right? That, that part that there was no cell phone signal that you had to go through? Oh, they oh, went. I went to OCPs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Orange County. Orange County. Yeah. I want those. Um, what is that? That Orange sounds like a place I can be. I'll just give you my chance. No, it's different. It looks different. Sure, we'll work. There's no more. I don't want to work with kids' crazy parents. That was, it was okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, they're cool. They're cool. They're crazy ass parents. Like me? Shit. I'm crazy as Where are you taking that kid? Touch him. 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 Touch <laughs> she said, don't help me. No, I just choose and put my head on. The patient is so sick and bad. What? What are you saying? I said, I put it in the best. That's a criminal pressure. Some places are wrong. Check that Saunders or what? Yeah, if you have any more questions, uh, uh, I would like to thank Miss Sam for thank you, Sam. Her, for her time. Oh, do you have your old test no. quizzes? Yeah, no. I just want to study. Bye, Sam. Bye. See you next week. <laughs> I just want to study. All right. Okay. Sick. Okay. Uh, where are we? Um, yeah, it's gonna be exciting this term. Okay. I hope so. Um, First thing. So you just have to uh, adapt and conquer. Can you see There's an imaginary line right here. Extremely hot. And your knee just crossed it. Especially since you got a last phase. Look at that. I got the biggest guy. And I'm like, I'm even on the fourth of the table. Get that TV dinner tray table? No, no, a folding table. I'm going to push this stuff to the side so you can walk. For another four more weeks, right? We're going to be in here another seven days. We need our teacher back. We need a break. On Friday? It's like one. No, it's battery.